Good evening, everybody. So you bought yourself a Nissan S13 and you don't know where to start? Look no further, I'm here to help you. Ow! Look no further because, well, these are the things that I was looking for when I bought my first S13. And I figured maybe you need the same things. Maybe you're looking for something similar. In this video, I'll go through most common issues, mods to make it better, faster, and more reliable. Since we all know that these engines are great or terrible, depending on where you are. Why is that though? So C18 engine has several strong and weak points, as well as many other engine basically. It has a cast iron block, which makes it more durable. It's harder, more reliable. That was five points. Belt driven, direct acting camshaft, ref to the moon basically and it's easier to modify because you can just slap an adjustable gear on it and adjust the power curve a little bit and you can modify a power curve so it's not going like this but it's going like more power. power and in my humble opinion it sounds the best out of all stock s13 engines not including Jay-Z or RB swaps, obviously, but each to their own. the question is why so many different opinions about it. European countries tend to say that the uh, engine is terrible, it's trash, it throws bearings, so many problems, nobody wants them. So mostly here you will see S13s with swaps, like Jay-Z or <laughs> RB swaps <laughs> or even one UZ. <laughs> But now not really CA anymore. Meanwhile in Australia you can see these engines pushing stupid numbers, drag racing, drifting, people basically choosing them over as ours in some cases. Why is that though? I observed these cars for many many years now and in Europe they used to be very cheap. They used to be extremely cheap. Nobody really wanted them. The same thing was with the engine. So basically if somebody was drifting the car engine exploded not a problem you can just get another one for 40 us dollars and then you kept drifting until the engines became scarce and because of how common they were and how cheap they were they were often mistreated because if something broke you could just get another one nobody bothered fixing them so what we have left now is basically all of these leftover broken engines that not many people took care of Great engines, in my opinion, but there are a few weak points that we have to look out for when we first buy a car. Especially when you plan to drift it or race it. For example, failing oil pumps. Low aftermarket support basically compared to SR's little bit less parts for CA. Aging design makes finding parts for a little bit more difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's more difficult. While revving, especially when, when you drift, all the oil stays in the pan, and a pan in the head. So the head will hold over one liter of oil. The oil sump doesn't reach the oil, you know, the oil level anymore, and the engine gets ends up sucking air. That's not good. That's where you get the bearing history from. Breather system sucks. You know these hoses that go on top of the engine. Change them or run them to the oil catch can. That's the best, probably the best option to do with that engine. Speaking of oil, you can make the drainage that go directly to the oil pan from the back of the head. That will, that will help you when you drift. One more thing with these engines is basically cooling. Add a bigger radiator, now sorted. They don't really like to run hot, you know. The oil gets hotter, 
means gets thinner, the bearings don't like it, the engine doesn't like it, and you won't like it either. Here I'm gonna make a checklist, this side or that side or here, up there, I haven't decided yet, okay? I'm making a checklist for you, what to kind of take off when you buy the engine in random order, kind of maybe in order, get new gaskets, seals, you know, 30 year old rubber is getting brittle, get new oil pump is relatively cheap and it, it's gonna save you a lot of headache in the future, might as well get new crank bearings, you know, mains and rods, clean oil drains, you know, the, the drain that goes from the turbo to the oil pan, clean that, the, the ones that are getting from the head to the block, you need to clean that as well, because this engine has some problems with breathing, and no breathing causes stupid pressure in the crankcase, we don't want that bearing, still want that, the engine doesn't want that, you know, the drill. Better radiator, I said that already, Bigger turbo, if you want to look for the power, you're gonna go for the turbo. Either T28 out of S14 or S15 SR engines, or a whole set HX35. Bigger injectors, bigger intercooler, you need that, but, but if you're looking to putting a bigger turbo on it, I'm assuming you know what you're doing. And one more thing I want to talk about is that uh, this thing will have some issues. When you buy it, either won't idle properly or it's gonna stutter, misfire, bog or whatever. Most of these things will boil down to a few issues that relate to the engine being old and used. So one, idle RPMs fluctuating is gonna be most likely a fuel pressure regulator in the back of the rail, injector rail thing. Replace that and that should be okay, that should fix it. It's most of the time it that that's the problem has a misfire hard starting i would look into exhaust cam inside there's a spline that drives a cam angle sensor you check that most of the time is either worn out or is it's it's kind of loose if you put a finger in there it shouldn't be loose it shouldn't be moving if it's gone well replace the cam sometimes misfire can be caused by ignition coils or the ignition amplifier but these are not that common it at least should start one very common issue with these is that it is very hard to start when it's hot and uh, when it's cold it's fine and the forums have multiple multiple topics like that oh it doesn't start when it's hot most of the time is because of the temperature sensor the coolant temperature sensor in the inlet manifold no in the you know, the coolant thing. Coolant temperature sensor, there are two. Replace them both. One is for the ECU, the other one's for gauges, but replace them both, they are very cheap. A few dollars, or a few euro, or a few gold nuggets. Replace both, please. I hope this video will get you started. Get your car on the road. Remember, if you don't work on the car, the car will not work at all. I don't know, I just try to be smart.